Yep, just making sure I uh, measure twice, cut once. It's not cars and cameras unless we're dual drilling a set of rims. That's true. Is it bad? Yeah, I was just told that we can't gap weld Cromali. <laughs> I'll be the judge of that. What's up, everybody? Welcome to part two of our Triumph 955 powered sand rail dragster. In today's episode, Ike says we're going to have a rolling chassis. I say no chance because we still have to completely build the front suspension. We need to bend the tubes back there and set up our one and a quarter Cromali axle. You said it best. We're going to shoot for a roller, but settle for a wheelbarrow. I'm not going to settle for anything less than a roller. Okay. Last time we were held up because we needed Ike's big feet to make sure he was going to fit in this chassis. I mean, I, they're close to the same size as Charles's feet. And his big shoulders to make sure he would fit in there. Yeah, the, your yeah. torso is taller than mine. Yeah. Uh, I feel like... Uh, you got shoulder pads on? No. Uh, I feel like uh, a roll bar yes, would, sir. would cover up any... Like, I know y'all are shooting for the shoulders being protected. I think the, the uh, roll bar hoop would would do that just fine. And as far as uh, my big old feet, I mean, I'm in there, baby. So if this is where the seat's going to be. Oh, boy. Do you want your arms any lower? We need the bars to be wider. Look at his elbows. Well, that, I mean, we can go. We can go a little bit wider. Uh, give me a board. Is that okay? That might help. I don't know. What do y'all think right here? I think that's it's good, except for knees bouncing. You know how the cross cart is a knee whacker. Hey. Yeah. Is there any way that maybe we could get the the dash to start like up well, and we then could, over? We could probably do like. Just to kind of hoop like that. Mm -hmm. Well, it'd be nice. It'd be and nice to have some... a sharp bend at the ends, and it almost straight in the middle. I don't know if we can achieve that. That would give us the most knee clearance. So we've got it marked and measured for Ike. Now Charles is going to see if he fits. Yep. Yeah, your knee should be able to pass yep. under it. Yeah. It will, because it's only just barely yeah. clipping this. Yeah. So I have probably that much knee I room. I think that's, that's better. Not too bad. Looks good to me. All right. Some tube boys. I'm cutting out three uh, 26 inch pieces. We're gonna notch them down on either side to 25 inches. And they're gonna go in right behind the seat, in front of the seat, mimic the dash. That one's getting cut out. And then I think at the one or two of them, we're basically bending, we're bending at the middle one going straight but the wedge is still gonna continue up. And then I think at the motor, we're gonna drop it, drop it down at the back half, but either, either way, this is gonna allow us to kind of set the size and the width of the top and bottom bars. We tack them in place, bend it. Of the passenger compartment. Of the passenger, of the passenger compartment. Yes, absolutely. So, yep, just making sure I uh, measure twice, cut once. Cool. Driver. I like notching thin tubing. It's a lot easier. Everything's okay. Might have to move some stuff at the back because we hadn't set it up for the width. But from this point on, basically we're gonna bend it here and get back here to touch again. The top bars and the so, bottom bars, so right? So we're, we're squaring it, we're taking the wedge out yeah. At, from this point and squaring it up. Yep, it's going to be square in the uh, in the driver's seat area. All right. Sweet. I think we need to... Uh, yeah, we need to square this thing up, tack it. But I think we need to uh, get some uprights. Oh, that's right. Yep. Do we have any more pipe or are we waiting on pipe? I think we're waiting on it. Ah! Cover? Yep. Oh, 
I got the hiccups. I hear it. Golly. Cover. Yep. Yeah, the hiccups while welding is kind of throws you It off. adds adds that extra little uh, yeah, the zig to the zag. Cover. Yeah. That's that's good. I just want to make that one a little. All right, that's little looking. Bit that's looking good. Gas pedal, brake pedal, clutch. We might have a clutch on the hand. Huh? Or a handbrake. Who knows? We were discussing it without you. Yeah. But no, right. just, just possibilities. You know, trying to do handbrake. Uh-huh. So that way one foot does one thing and the other foot does one thing. So I don't you're not... Problem with I'd say you got like just a little bit less than three fingers. Oh, that's between plenty. your sh between your shoulder and that's that bar. Plenty. So, yeah. so should I mark? I should mark the bar where it is yeah, before before probably. it gets moved. Yeah. And then we'll square that up. Probably tack that in. Get the one on the lower, and then uh -huh. do uprights from that bar to that connect from that connection well, point to that there, connection down point to there. Yeah, and, and we're then, gonna use the thicker metal for the because, because of the hoop. We're going to be, yeah, because we're going to have our roll bar tied into it, and uh, I feel better with a little bit thicker metal. Uh, and then we'll be able to run some bars going to the back to hang our axle from. So while Ike and Charles have been working on the hoop area, I'm working on the where the suspension, where our axles are going to mount. So I have uh, an adjustable axle hanger for the rear, and I have one for the front. I have it loaded up in the Langmuir Crossfire Pro. Let's hit it. So I'm adding some of the rear of the frame here we're going to be uh, installing these somewhere about this point where we're going to be installing one of these and then we're going to have this on the end where we can uh, adjust adjust the uh, rear axle height uh, and then we're going to take this piece right here and we're going to bend it down until it meets here and we're going to weld it up. Oh, I see how you're you're cheating to uh, get your level straight. You're just using the other tube yeah. to set that so you don't even need a square. Right. Although I am going to... Yeah, I was going to say it wouldn't hurt. What is that, Charles? It, it's, a, it's a dual lug pattern template. I cut, I cut the triangles out so I could measure off the center of these holes to the center of the existing holes. And it came out almost good. So the problem we're having is we don't have any wheels that fit our hubs. So Charles is uh, drilling out a dual bolt pattern on some other wheels that are just for mock-up purposes. Yeah, these don't have to, these aren't going to go at speed, so like, if they hop, it doesn't matter. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. So, they might go at speed, it'll be fine, it'll is be what fine. you're saying, okay. Hey, Just clarify. It's not cars and cameras unless we're dual drilling a set of rims. That's true. So we've been doing a lot of deliberating over our front suspension, and then we totally should have sat here and talked about it before I cut these out. But basically, we're going to have a tube... It goes right there, about like that, and I cut out these pieces here. And we're gonna have holes drilled in these, and it's gonna be bolted to that. So multiple holes in these means that up and down. We're gonna have adjustment. And then we're also gonna have, yep, we're gonna have a second tube about right there, just to kind of mimic the real uh, dragster look. 
Um, but I'm going to have to cut these and extend them so we can have bolt holes up and down this whole thing. So we can go up and down, you know, an inch or two is all we need. That's all we need. Yep. So anyway, let's get it done. So what we got going on back here is I'm fixing to hang this axle and bearings. This is an inch and a quarter axle from Go Power Sports along with the inch and a quarter uh, bearings and hangers all from Go Power Sports. Link in the description, guys. This is a really cool uh, setup here and uh, we're fixing to have the back half of the cart where we can roll it. Hi. Yeah. You did good work, man. I try. Cause it's it's ready to tack. That's what I'm doing. I'm gonna tack this in place. And we're just gonna tack it because we may need to shorten the wheelbase or move the axle closer to the motor. Yep. So on and so forth. But we want a roller, dang it. We'd love to have a roller cover. Yep. Now, uh, I didn't weld the pipe that's attached to these because we can move now move this thing forward and backwards. So technically we have a roller now. I wouldn't put any weight on it. Yeah, but technically we got a roller. We can pick up the back. We can pick, or we can pick up the front and we can scoot it around. It's a roller. Gently. It's a wheelbarrow. All right, well, our front suspension pieces are about ready to get tacked on to the chassis, but that needs to get straightened. It's a little cattywampus right now. So we cleared off our frame table, and we're going to move the chassis on the table, straighten it out, and then weld our front suspension on. Oh, you're going that way. Oh, okay. Wow. Big. Or were you referring to the... So, let's uh, undo those clamps and we're going to watch it kind of go... And uh, then we're going to put a pipe in it and we're going to give it a little... Sounds good. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, yeah, once you welded it up, we had minimal spring springage. Um, yeah, you know, I, I'm gonna get the uh, level. It's only slightly banana shaped, and this uh, table isn't perfect that either. This table isn't perfect, in fact, the ends do dive down just a touch. I don't remember how much we said on video, but this table is made out of, I think it's five sixteenths, so it's thicker than quarter inch, uh, and we got it for a killer deal because it had a giant bow in it, Yeah. and so this was designed to be our frame table that we had to <laughs> straighten, but I, we think it's within a sixteenth all the way around, which is better than any of the floors we built stuff on. It's not a good, not a good look. I think the, uh, yeah, so the, the floor's not level here. Oh. Yeah. So basically what I'm doing is I'm just going to copy the level of the table to the, to the bars. Over. Yep. Cool. So I think to sum up what we had was this tube was basically shorter than the rest. And bit. so the, this tube and this tube were angled that way. So basically what we did, we cut this, we cut that, we're uh, rocking these to match this side, and then we're just going to cut the XS off. That's it. No big deal. No big deal at all. And then I'll check the rock. All right, you need to go back a little more, sir. That's probably it. That looks like it's it. Oh, yeah. 
That's perfect. Cover. Yep. I'm wondering if I should just weld it all the way up. I kind of think so, don't you think? A little more secure than that, maybe. So we straightened our frame last night. We got in this morning, and when I was coming down from upstairs, I noticed that we still have quite an issue. So we need to fix the uh, top side of the frame now. Charles is going to work on tacking our front suspension in. We think it's because we built this chassis on wood blocks. Usually we just go straight to the floor, and the floor is usually straighter than, uh, than the wood blocks we used. But we'll fix it. All right, so I have our front suspension mocked up. We're gonna skip out on the height adjustability, especially because there's gonna be practically zero weight on the front of this vehicle. So it's not gonna wanna sink down into the sand like the rear. Uh, so this is basically how we have it. The hub and spindle is gonna get welded on here with our desired alignment. So I'm gonna go ahead and take these apart, weld these tubes on our other tubes and uh, get them reinstalled. I mean, only thing I'm seeing, all of this is tight. Okay. Only thing I'm seeing is this thing moving on this, the one weld that you you have. So tightening up the bolts ain't gonna help at all. Okay. Would you call this a jig? This is a type of, I don't know if I'd call it a jig because a jig would be holding it on this end too. You we got half I mean? a jig. We got a jig. Yeah. <laughs> There we go. <laughs> uh, this is our, our wheel jig, jig. And basically, we know we want the bottom of the chassis to be four and a half inches off the ground, which is this surface right here. And so in order to do that, we've welded uh, this piece of square tubing in place so we can hold all this in place so we can tack in our, I guess, control arms is what we're calling them. Yeah with our desired caster, camber, other alignment. Right. So we know we want about 25 degrees of caster, uh, which is a ton for most circumstances, but it's good for drag racing because mm -hmm. it gives you that kind of high, high speed stability. Yeah. And this thing doesn't really need to turn very much either. Right. So we're setting that, we're setting the camber with uh, this sweet bubble actually that has a little degree indicator in it. Yep. Um, and then we're gonna give it a better tack we're going to get these welded in, and that's going to be one half of our front end. Um, the, uh... Golly, I'm about camber, to fall. Yeah, the camber's way off, because the steering was turned a little bit. Okay. Which caused the, the camber. Um, I straightened it up, because it was turned this way. And I think I got it pretty... I think it needs to turn a little bit more to be straight on this table. Okay. How straight do you think that is? Hmm. <clears throat> it's it looks pretty. That looks pretty straight. It's it's pointing this way just a little bit. It, is it an optical illusion because of this bottom one being pointing that way? Maybe. Hmm. It's the look you want. <laughs> <laughs> it's it looks more like twenty. There's a there's a pointer here. Did you know that? Yeah. Yeah. It's a little bit past twenty five. I think it looks. It's well, you did drop 26. it. Twenty <laughs> six. Maybe I'll have to check the rail again. <laughs> well, you did drop it. I mean. Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, boys. I guess all this moving around, we've lost our our twenty five degrees because twenty five degrees is right there. And so we are it's not close there. It's close-ish. It's close-ish. I don't care what we have here, as long as the other side is the same. We have a lot of caster. That's all that matters. So let's tack it. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Basically setting the camber right now. Uh oh. Is it bad? Don't make that face. 
There you so go. It's, it's fine. Just a little tweakage. You know what? Good enough for government work. <laughs> That's what you want to hear. Let's go 110 miles an hour. <laughs> yeah, I was just told that we can't gap weld for Molly. <laughs> I'll be the judge of that. Oh, boy. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, this is our frame. How you like it? Looks right, great. Yeah, pretty straight. Yeah, we didn't even have to redo it. No, no, definitely not. First time, first shot. We did have some time to build a rocket ship, too, though. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah we're going to take that thing to the moon. Dude. But. I got an idea. Okay. Let's wrap it in duct tape and make a boat. Duct tape boat. That's not a bad idea. So that's right, for the first time ever on Cars and Cameras, we had to completely start over with a new chassis. Um, Ops. Yeah, we think it's because we built this on wood and not on the floor like usual. Um, so we're just going to recycle everything we can off that. And uh, we started over with this chassis, which we have built entirely on this table. And it's looking really, really good. I don't know what he's doing over this there. Is my new, this is my new speedboat. I don't know what you're talking about. You're not cutting this thing up. So in the next episode, we're going to be welding our front suspension pieces in place. And uh, hopefully we should have a rolling chassis. We should. We had one, then we threw it in the ditch. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going on vacation. So the next episode, Ike and Charles are going to be in charge of the shop. And they are going to whip up some kind of surprise that I'm sure is going to be insane. So... Oh. You're going to love it. Be sure to stay tuned. Leave a thumbs up if you're enjoying the content. Subscribe to Cars and Cameras. Don't miss the Ike and Charles special. We'll see you next time. Oh, yeah.